Hi, everybody. This is Lasting Conversations, and I am Heather Lockett. I have the absolutely amazing Michelle Morano Burke with me today. Hi, Michelle. Hey there. How are you? Hi. We are zooming in uh, from different parts of the country. I'm actually on the road. So these are part of my Conversations on the Road podcast this summer. And I'm zooming in from Boston, and Michelle is in Florida. So thank you for this impromptu invite. It dinged on me yesterday of, of course, this is going to be the most perfect topic. So thanks again for coming. I love that. When things happen in perfect timing, the door yep. flood open and people walk in who are supposed to walk in. Yep, absolutely. So Michelle, you have your own thriving podcast called The Audacity to Be Happy. And this is born out of your own circuitous journey, um, a lot with weight gain, weight loss, healthy, unhealthy, feeling like you're going to literally die and coming out the other side of that. And that life continues with its own twists and turns. And one of the themes today, as I've had my own health journey and weight yo-yo, um, is making peace with my body and that how we can balance enjoying and thriving with life and not making food our enemy. So I want to talk to you about that if you have any pearls of wisdom. And what I've been finding is being on the road, it's hard to be in our usual routine because we are in different locations. Not only are we in different locations and I don't have all the handy dandy tools in my suitcase that I would normally have, but being in different locations and wanting to try this cute little diner's food or this one or this one, and or I don't take a doggy bag, so maybe my portions are actually bigger because I don't know, it just it throws everything out of our usual routine. So we have so much that we can tap on, and I hand the mic to you. And what I can tell you is all of those topics that you just spoke about around healthy living while traveling and while yeah. being out of your routine, there are solutions. And it's a mindset thing, just like choosing to have the audacity to be happy is a mindset. It's not a functionality. It is an action that you take based on your thought process. So mm -hmm. my thought process is very solution-based. Every day I wake up, and I know that there are going to be obstacles in my day, whether they're based on my health and wellness, whether they're based on my business, whether they're based on my personal life. It doesn't matter. I'm going to come across obstacles. And it's a mindset and a solution-based mindset that will get you there. So let's talk about where you're at right now with this traveling and not being in your routine. Mm -hmm. Number one thing. So... You have to counterbalance the fact that you're going to eat not the 80-20 lifestyle that you've got yourself accustomed to that has either helped you release weight or that's helped you maintain your healthy weight, right? Mm -hmm. So if your numbers are going to be 60-40, you have to up your activity level. And then in that 60 that you're being good, you got to be really good in that 60 because the 40 is going to be very indulgent, especially when you travel. You're going to if you're in Chicago, you're going to try deep dish pizza. If you're in Wisconsin, you're going to eat more cheese than you can imagine. Right. So all of these things are important, but you have to be solution based. So let's start with something really basic. Well, before before we continue with that, let's give a little more background from from you and what it is that you do, because I do believe that you're a lifestyle coach as well. And one of the things, so this notion of being the audacity to be happy, really, you know a few things. So let's let's go a little, let's rewind a little bit to clue folks in from your come from. I will. I, I think that's a wise decision. Sometimes I get so excited about it. You do. You get so excited. I'm and I'm like, ah, I can't wait to tell. And, and what I will say right now in this juncture, our green juices are my go to's. I mean, so talk about a balance. I love and that. yes, so if I'll have all the cheese in Vermont, let's say, but within that, here's some green juice and I won't have a bunch of nothing for a long time. Uh, just just to kind of air things out. <laughs> the system. 
It's balance. It is a balance. It is totally a balance. We're talking about pivoting before we jumped on. We're talking about balance. So let me give you a little backstory on who Michelle Morano Burke is and why I have any qualification to speak on what I'm speaking on today with you. Um, (laughs) Audacity to be happy is birthed from a transformational journey that I've been on for over 15 years now. Um, Through that journey, I've taken myself from extremely poor health, um, weighing over 320 pounds. My scale didn't go higher, so I don't know what I weighed. I just, you're a petite, you're a petite stature. I'm also, right? I'm, yeah. I was a dancer. I was a cheerleader on two different squads. I was a very active young lady. Um, I had a trauma that happened 25 years ago. And I lost about 10 years of my life down the rabbit hole of self-soothing with food. Others self-soothed with alcohol, others do drugs, others it's sex. We all have that fight or flight reaction. I couldn't fight for 10 plus years. I was in flight. And my flight was I ran to carbohydrates. (laughs) I'm Italian. And the more Italian bread, pizza, and pasta I could get in my body, the calmer I was, even though I was suffering, I didn't know how badly any of that was until one day I woke up and I no longer was healthy. So fast forward um, to about 14, 15 years ago, I am in a Jazzy, those little motorized scooters with an oxygen tank 24 seven with four little girls. Your daughters? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Two are my natural born, two of my bonus daughters. Yep. I was raising all four of them. Their mom had passed. So I was everything from that mother figure for them. And for my two girls, their dad didn't have the capacity to parent the way that he needed to parent at the time. So I really was juggling a lot. And I wasn't being the role model I should be. I was loving on them. I was cooking for them. I was entertaining them, but I wasn't teaching them important things. But about 15 years ago, it became life and death. We actually uh, went on a last trip to Disney. All of the kids, my first ex-husband and my current husband, and we sat on the ride soaring and we held hands and I started to profusely cry. And Instantly, I knew I wasn't meant to die, not right then, and that I was going to come back from that trip. And even though more than one doctor, more than one specialist had told me, prepare for the worst. So you had gone into this trip literally thinking, hey, family, let's take a last trip together. We shipped oxygen tanks. Wow. I'm getting to see we're already at the goosebumps part of the part of the episode. So. And then on that ride, you said, no, that's not happening. Not my time. Um, Not your time. Not my time. And I felt harder for those I love than myself. That's my nature. I'm Mm -hmm. learning through the audacity to be happy mentality to love myself as much as I love others. And I'm doing a good job. I'm growing. I'm doing really beautiful work with myself, which is allowing me to do better work for others. Um, But on that ride, I made the decision that I was going to come home and I was going to hunt down the top specialist in primary pulmonary hypertension. And I was going to find out what was causing it because without a cause, there was no treatment. Right. That's where we were. Because we can throw darts at this stuff all day long. That's really. And and thus the yo-yo sometimes that we think, right. We just throw darts at stuff sometimes. Yep. And that is what happened. So I got back. I found the number one specialist in the country for primary pulmonary hypertension. I'd already gone through the gamut of testing. I was a human pincushion. I didn't want to do it again, but it was life and death. So I didn't care. And I did it. And this doctor was the right guy because when you're in the right place at the right time, following the path for me, that God opened for me, for others, it's universe, Buddha, I don't care. But for me, God opened a door and said, walk here. I walked there. The doctor said, you're not going to die on my watch. I'm going to put you through a lot. And I'm very sorry, but we're going to get an answer. And they got the answer. It was a 
heart defect that really wasn't something they could medicate. So I got the answer, but the solution was tragic because I wasn't going to have any help getting weight off of a 320 pound body because I wasn't able to walk. My oxygen levels were in the 80s. I was going to have to do this on caloric deficit alone. It so was that was the first step that they wanted you to just caloric, like just big time. cut back on what you were eating. This is not everybody's story. This is a life right. and death story, right? So right. I'm not trying to say this is your going to be right. a journey. Right, right, right. Get to a place where it is everybody's journey, but I'm just taking you through that one yep. step. This is your come from. This is your come from. Be happy. I have to grind and find that spot in my body that says at all costs, you do it. Right. Forget about food. It doesn't matter anymore. Save your life. You have children. They need you. I'm I'm a young lady who had lost their father when I was 14. I wasn't going to leave the girls. Right. So that I, wasn't going to be your story. It wasn't my story. Yep. I'm 53. That happened um, 15 years ago. 20, 15, yeah, about 15 years ago. Maybe, no, it's more than that. I started my weight loss journey big time, but it's even before that. So somewhere mm-hmm. between 20 and 15 years ago is when the light switch went on. I said life or death. And I was fortunate to find a nutrition system that worked for me, that cut my caloric intake, that upped my protein, lowered my carbs, got me to a place where I was so disciplined like a machine. I lost 30 pounds in 30 days. 90 pounds in six months, started that. And then at that point, learned everything about nutrition, everything about holistic living, everything about the power of the human body, what we can do, what we can reverse, how amazing the human body is. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's where we'll get the story to, where it relates to everyone. Because not everybody has to go down the torturous road that I went on but it sure. gave me things and it gave me gifts and it right. gave the ability to do what I'm doing right now, which is sharing with you and your community, Heather, and yeah. sharing with the Audacity Be Happy community, the power that you have within you to make decisions and choices in your health, in your wellness, in your lifestyle, in your mind, all of that. So let's get back to what it takes to live healthy while I'm traveling, because I am that woman. I don't sit still. That's true. And there's one more piece. There's one more piece is in terms of the mindset and that lifestyle includes our places of work or who we are, we are in relationship with. And when you and I got together a couple months ago, what really came in strong was the work environment and that you were thriving professionally, but it was also killing you. And that is an important concept. This is part of what my whole trip right now is about, is leaving things that were part of one life that served and now stepping forward into something else. And it's it's kind of nerve wracking, but you made that leap as well, which does nothing but switch our physicality from the inside out. So talk about that part before we get to the, even the traveling. I promise. Yeah is key yeah I, the only reason i'm doing a podcast the only reason you and i met yeah. the only reason right. it was opened was because one year ago in april my mother was very very ill she suffered from cancer for about five years and in the fifth year it got to the place where we know it was life and death it was coming and she needed 24 7 care and i was working 70 hours a week And in between that, cooking for mom, cleaning for mom, caring for mom. And as much as it provided security financially. Right. It's you were at the top of your professional echelon. I was the sales manager for the number one brokerage in South Florida. Yeah. Two big offices. I was top recruiter. Uh, My numbers were extraordinary. I had nothing left to give. I was a robot. My, My personal life, my family life. I gave nothing. And what I did find myself, I had started to gain my weight back. 
And it was the first time that I had started to put weight on again after a 14 year journey of success. Mm -hmm. I got on the scale and I was 70 pounds up after losing 150. I'm in danger zone. I'm mentally drained. I'm physically drained. I'm nutritionally depleted. I'm grabbing and going. I'm not sleeping. I walked in and I told my mother, my mother's very conservative, old fashioned Italian Catholic, keep your job, get your steady paycheck, you know, entrepreneurship, even though I've done it before successfully as a single woman, it was terrifying for my mother, terrifying, like, well, I don't do that. <laughs> however, however, my mother watched me carefully and she knew, who right. she, she knew she birthed, I'm sorry if your audience doesn't like the word badass, but I'm a badass. Oh, badass is good. That's the title of one of my shows, a badass butterfly. Um, oh my God, badass. Yeah. And- on my back. Hold I got a, some butterflies on your back tattooed. There you go. You are a badass, okay. butterfly. A badass <laughs> butterfly. You nailed it. Yeah. So she didn't skip a beat and said, walk. I said, okay, I'm going to open up a custom spray tan studio. I don't know why I did the business model. It made sense. I'm going to help my daughter learn how to be an entrepreneur. I walked away with no safety net. I took all my savings, threw it to something, thought it was going to make it work. And then my mother took a really bad turn and I couldn't even help get the business off the ground. I lost over $60,000. This is the first time I'm talking out loud. Yeah. Because these are the things that can happen as well. I'm, I I right. promise. And that's okay. That. Yeah. I am yeah. never going to bullshit somebody. Sure. And- going to think because what you see on social media all done up and partying and happy you know I also show the crying videos of me mourning my mother what it was to write her eulogy so I'm transparent I lost sure. thousand dollars and I went in debt I haven't been in debt I can't remember when I am the most responsible person I just threw it all and said whatever has to happen this year I'm going to take care of my mom I'm going to mm-hmm. bathe her. I'm going to feed her. I'm going to carry her. I'm going to make her comfortable. I'm going to play nice music. I'm going to make, I'm going to have fresh flowers in here. I'm, that's what I'm going to do. Money's money. I'm talented. I'm gifted. I will figure it out. Right. And I played it out. I do not regret it's over a year. I am in debt. I am climbing out week by week. I built the Audacity to Be Happy podcast that is growing exponentially, the the guests that are coming on, mind-blowing. And guess what I'm doing again? Living a very healthy lifestyle. I released all of the 70 pounds that I put back on. And I'm going further. And without Botox, injection, this, that, the other thing, I look and feel, I can't even describe it. Like, I, there has to be a higher power doing something. <laughs> so I literally feel like Benjamin Button, yeah. energized, mentally. And I don't want anybody to be tricked. The way that I shared that I lost money is the same way I'm going to share about my mental health. And I have been sharing it on my podcast. And it's the most vulnerable I've ever been in my life. I have done a really good job at making everybody think I'm the happiest girl in the world. I have a great smile. Everybody sees me and thinks I am the bubbliest, happiest, social. Those are true statements, but I but I've battled manic depression my whole life. My and that takes a physical toll as well because our bodies do the thing. Cortisol, right? increase, yeah. Stress, yeah. All, all of it. I fight it all. <clears throat> right. Diabetes, I fought th- thyroid. I have all of it under control holistically. Right. You know what that journey is, right? When I tell you these things, it is not from a position of, look what I did. Right. Look what you can do. Right. Nothing about me. I hope to be the catalyst. I hope to be the inspiration, motivation, empowerment. It has nothing to do with what I look like, how much weight I lost, other than if it serves the purpose of, anyone in your audience, my audience to say, 
320 pounds? You lost 150 pounds. You look like that. You sound like that. You're you're following a dream at 53. You're dreaming. Wait, wait. Following a dream is one thing. Imagine the fact that I even started dreaming again. Right. I didn't think I could dream again. I I you know that that's a very I appreciate that point because I've had those moments. And I to be honest, if all of us listening are honest with ourselves, we've all had those moments of questioning the next day, let alone the next year and the next month. Now, I know so a lot of people who have that internal fire all the time, which is great because some of us were we've had that fire, but you know, it kind of can flame out sometimes pretty, pretty badly. However, Truthfully, we've all had our to our knees moments, literally that takes our breath away. Whether it's chemically, yep, or situationally. Sational, exactly. All I can tell you is I don't know a human who's gotten to 53 who hasn't dealt with some form of trauma. Yep. Divorce or death, loss, loss, worry. Loss of, yep. money, loss of money, loss right. of death, loss of love, loss of a lot of things, right? Loss of what we think we're in control of. So even raising kids, sometimes we think, ah, it's going to go this way, but no, because our children, our children are our teachers and we're meant to, they're meant to do something completely different. So yeah. Like move to the other side of the country. Uh Uh-huh. There in a million years, if you asked me if one of my children were going to move so far away that it takes two planes to get there. There's no direct flight. And then when you get off the plane, it's a three hour drive. Mm -hmm. I would have said, you've lost your mind. I'm Italian. We're tight. Me and my girls were tight. We do things together. We go to concerts. I babysit. I can't wait to be around my grandkids. Oh, got to let your babies fly. It's it's because you've done a good job. That's right. They are their own badass butterflies. They know what they want to do. Right. We are encouraging. That's right. Me and the other badass butterflies out there are encouraged by being open, by being honest, by not pretending it was easy, by showing the struggle, but showing what it takes to help your mind, heart, soul balance enough and choose self-love. Without self-love, I could do nothing. I had to go on a self-discovery journey when I left my job, when I cared for my mother, and when I lost her, I had to dig to a place. Now, I lost both my parents, so I know I'm old enough to that be normal, to Mm -hmm. be 50-something and have lost your parents, Um, but losing one of 14 and losing one at what you would call an appropriate age, but that person being Mm -hmm. your person. I lost my person. My husbands that I've had weren't my people. My children who I love more than anything, they're not my person. My mother was my person and I was her person. Mm -hmm. I lost my person. So I had to really dig deep and do some self-discovery and so as much as I learned to love myself in a, in a deeper, more profound way, most of it's about me, but a piece is about li- living a legacy for my mother. The things that my mother couldn't do, the things my father never got to do because his life was taken at a young age. I live with them inside of me They are the fuel that gets me out of bed some days. Mm -hmm. I'm staring at a picture right now. I'm going to show you because it's really cool. But give me one second. Okay. Because it's worth it. Oh, what is this? I'm showing Uh, you. Is that your dad on a bike? My dad is such a badass. This was him in Brooklyn on Avenue U at the age of 18 doing a handstand on the handlebars of a bicycle. This is the coolest photo and it looks black and white except for his blue shirt. And it is made. wild. Yeah. And there's it a is. Of my mom that is being created 
That's the same black and white with the the shirt, uh, the bathing suit actually being hot pink. And it's on the beach in Coney Island. And she looks like she came out of a movie. So that's being done. But I'm showing you that. Yeah. I embody. I embody that. That. that that's joy that's right there. Me. Yeah. A handstand, full on handstand on the handlebars of a bicycle in the middle of Brooklyn. That's the audacity to be happy. That's that joy in the middle of everything. That's what this is. Yeah. So, I know we went down, ready? Twist turns. Never, never think you know where the conversation's going because it will. No, be- but it's perfect because the other thing that you mentioned oh. in terms of who's looking and who's watching, and if I, we, it does come back to self, right? We are our own best people that we have to self-care for period that that is just period and it's hard to remember that as an overfixer in recovery myself and the mom um we think it's about somebody else it is and it is about being a good member of society and humanity and yet if we don't do this part for us first our own legacy for our kids, we think we're doing so great for our kids, but really we're not. If we're not showing them the best of ourselves, if we're not showing them our health and our happiness and our joy, that is the legacy that we actually live, um, leave for them. And that's, those are part of my own walking journey myself is to recognize, oh, what is my daughter watching me do or not do? So that it was time to end that marriage. That was frighteningly in my face of what am I showing her about staying in something that is not healthy for anybody. So getting back to what you were saying, about your parents are your people and your kids are your people, but they're really not because we are meant to birth them and let them fly to be their own people. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, this is really beautiful stuff, Michelle. Thank you for allowing me to, to take the journey and to communicate it as mm-hmm. it comes and not having it be um, scripted and, and yeah. certain questions and check boxes. I marched to my own drum, but that drum right. wouldn't feel beat. And it was created specially for me. And there are special people like you who allow me to communicate the way that I do because it is a gift and it is meant to be shared. And I had to get out of my own comfort zone to allow this vulnerability. And, you know, I was talking to a girlfriend right before I got on with you Mm -hmm. and I made a joke. I, and I've been saying it for a long time, but vulnerability is my superpower. Two years ago, vulnerability was shown as a weakness. Nobody, nobody accepted vulnerability. I was brought up in a generation where you bury that shit. You don't yep. tell anybody about your junk. You just yep. show up, you put on a smile um, and that's it. And about two years ago, as the stuff was getting heavier and heavier through COVID, through me having to have a leadership role during COVID and just buck up buttercup and take on my mother's suffering and all of that, um, I decided it was a, it was a conscious decision to lead with vulnerability in a place where it wasn't really accepted at first. And I bucked the system and at first people didn't like it. And then all of a sudden, how funny, Michelle's on a trend. I'm on trend because vulnerability. (laughs) Right. This is part of it. This is true. Amazing in a path of vulnerability because now everybody's like, vulnerability is beautiful. I'm like, now it's after two years of feeling like, (laughs) because I was crying in public and that showed aside a weakness. I'm like, weakness? Do you have a clue who I am? Do you understand what I can do? Please don't judge tears. That's my heart. That's me being an empathetic, compassionate human. You don't like that? Go work on it. Cause I don't got to work. Well, there, there it is. And that that's topic for a whole nother day is the, the stip upper, stip upper lip mentality that we've all grown up with for so long that, you know, there's no, there's no crying in baseball. There's no crying at work. There's no crying at all. 
And we haven't even touched on the boys being even allowed to cry. And of course we can, because we're human and we feel. I think men crying is the most beautiful thing. I'm not going to lie. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's an extreme that I may not like, but right. many people who have empathy and compassion, especially right. about my journey, because my journey is difficult to hear about. And they ask a ton of questions as I'm, you know, in this stage of life. And I share openly and I scare sure. more. Okay, <laughs> you're, you're good. You're good. With the weak people, that's not for me, right? Yeah. But yeah, let's segue back if you don't. Yep. Mind. Let's get right back to the travel. What is this? Maybe drinking this again. I don't care about the brand, right? Right. So I'm not here promoting any specific brand of any kind. That's not my MO. But I come from a mantra of control what you can and let the rest go. So for me, I control two meals a day for sure, Mm -hmm. every day, even on what you would call a cheat day. So when you said you're in a new city and you're like, "Um, say you're in Chicago, I'm going for some deep dish. Those other two meals are your green smoothie juice. That's right. And a high protein, low carb meal. On point, on point. I'm getting my nutrition in. And yep. that, plus I did that. And part two, ready? Part two is this. This Lots is- Lots of water. 24 seven. Yep. Lemon in it because it helps you absorb it, which is important. But this is filled 24 seven. You don't get this skin- at 53, with any topical cream, listen, yeah, they're good, be moisturized, whatever. But if you're not drinking this from the inside out, you're dehydrated. When you're dehydrated, everything shows. So I drink this, I'm full, I get nutrition. So when I get down to that, oh my gosh, I'm going to have some delicious pizza meal. I'm not starving. I can only eat so much pizza. Right. Right. Even if I lost my mind and had three big pieces of pizza, which would make me almost vomit. But if I did, I am not calorically off the grid. I'm not. I controlled meal one. I controlled meal two. I drank a ton of water. You're not going to gain. So when I tell you, when you travel, you travel and you take certain things with you. For me, these are easy to grab. Or if you are somebody who drinks protein shakes, Listen, they have the portable blender. You don't even need a plug. You do a pack. Yep. You throw your packet in. You throw some berries in. You're done. You drink your protein. You don't have to sit and eat a fork and knife meal for everything. It's not always about pleasure. It's about your body has needs and you must give it what it needs. You need nutrients and you need minerals. And without it, when you don't have that, your body, your mind, off balance, your brain chemistry off balance. When your brain chemistry is off balance, you're not going to listen to the cues that say, I'm full. You're not going to listen to the cues that say, I'm thirsty for water. You're going to think, indulge, 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 because your brain is missing things. So I did an episode on supplements. One day, your audience, in some way, you'll share more about it. But supplements have changed my life I was not somebody who understood it. I did extensive research. Supplements aren't all created equal. Right. A lot of fillers, a lot of junk, but I aligned myself for a 10 year period and now for a, another company that makes sense to me. That supplementation helps me not have the highs and lows, the cravings, the sugar craving, the carb craving, the, because my body is getting nutrients and minerals that it can't get in our food supply anymore and why we destroyed our food supply. So without going down the rabbit hole, right. control what you can and let the rest go. So I control, when I'm traveling, I control two meals a day. If I want to have a huge breakfast, because I am a brec- breakfast girl, right? Mm-hmm. So guess what that means? I'm having a salad for dinner. Grilled chicken, salad for dinner, sorry. So if I want to indulge on a big diner breakfast up in the Northeast and I'm going to go to a diner and I'm going to have Mm -hmm. my scrambled eggs, bacon toast, and I'm going to have some pancakes, guess what? I'm going to do it, but I'm going to have a shake for lunch. And for dinner, I'm going to have a big salad with chicken or 
I mean, I don't eat fish, but other people eat fish, but I'm going to make sure the other two meals make sense. And then twice a month, and I plan it when I'm traveling, twice a month are absolute indulgent days. And you need them because you need to trick your body. You can't live a certain lifestyle over and over again with food. Your body- I have learned that. I've absolutely learned that, that even on a day where I've thought I've been quote unquote bad, and that's a whole nother topic too. If we have to stop thinking what's good or bad on anything ever, 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 but that our body goes, thank you. We needed the change. Thank you for being so regimented, but we really, 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 really needed that change up. Very healthy people. Yeah. The importance of disruption. Yep. You have to confuse the body. You have to confuse the mind. You have to confuse the digestive system or else it just expects the soldier. So when you give it one bit more, it's like, oh, I'm going to hold it. So twice, twice a month, I throw caution to the wind. I don't care. I eat <laughs> pizza for dinner, pasta for lunch, scrambled eggs and bacon and toast for breakfast. And guess what? I don't gain weight that week. Right. The earth doesn't crumble. I don't gain weight that week. So right. that's one. That's the food part. Right. Two. And it's probably the most important part. And I'm really, really important. And I know that people say you can't um, work out a bad diet. You can't win that way. Right. But you also. So you can move though. You can move and get, get your synapses going. Into healthy. Mm-hmm. Your cardiovascular system, your muscular system needs exercise to function optimally. Food Mm -hmm. cannot solve that problem. So move your butt ready. It doesn't cost you a penny. Pack sneakers, comfortable Mm -hmm. ones, and go explore wherever you're at. Do it at the beginning of the day before you get distracted. It's how we're built. Our brains, once we get distraction, really hard to reel it in. So I literally open my eyes wherever I'm at. The shoes, the sneakers go on my feet. I'm barely awake. I take, <laughs> I take my supplements, lemon water in my body. That's mm-hmm. religion. that's religion to me, right? Yeah. First thing is my water. Second thing is my supplements and my sneakers are on them out the door. I don't care if it's 15 minutes. If it could be a half an hour, great. But if it's 15 minutes, just walk with a little intensity. No running, no jogging necessary at all. The more intense, the higher the level of cortisol that's built up. People yep. don't understand that. And they're like, I work out like crazy. I can't lose this belly. You have a cortisol belly because your body went into stress from working out. So there's a. it's complex. Don't think it's... It's simple, but it's simple to walk. You're not stressing your body, move your body. And the main reason isn't even the exercise. It's the mind part of it. Right. Your best friend is endorphins. Endorphins are my best friend. I know that I can control my manic by flushing my body with endorphins as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So I move my body. And then for me, because I lost a lot of weight and I'm concerned about like underarm, which this is a miracle. Look at this. There's, there's muscle definition. This is somebody like guns. You got muscles. Right. But I travel with a band. Mm -hmm. It rolls up into a ball. Yeah. It doesn't, I I don't even think it weighs a pound. So don't tell me I'm going to, it's not going to fit in my luggage. It'll fit in your luggage, put in your pocketbook. And I use those bands, (laughs) the resistant bands. and. I put, listen, you're on vacation, wherever you're at, you put music on, you're in your room, you're dancing around, do 15 minutes of resistance in your room. You know, when I do it, I do it right before I go to bed. Why? I exhaust myself because I have a mind that goes, right? So I have to shut my brain off. How do I do that? I exhaust Exercise, right. I make myself. And if you don't have your bands, you can do basic isometric workouts that don't need anything. I do the best sit-ups in the world. They're full body sit-ups. They're not conscious. It's head all the way through to my feet. I stretch. Stretching feels amazing, especially as we get older, Heather. If you're mm-hmm. over 50 and you're skipping stretching, 
Let me tell you, for the women out there, for the women out there, men too, but I, I know how a woman's body is, not so much a man's, right? I feel so feminine stretching. Yep. I love the gracefulness that comes from that. I've been known to be called a bull in a china shop. I don't want to be a bull in a china shop. I want to be a delicate flower sometimes. So stretching has been one of those things that you can do anywhere. It's a great way to decompress. So I do active meditation. I don't do sit still and mm, I do a flow. Mm -hmm. I stretch and meditate. Yeah, beautiful. And that, these are travel ready tricks. Yep. Water intake, control two meals of your day, throw caution to the wind one day and eat whatever and do whatever. Move your body that day. Don't give yourself days off of moving your body. Moving your body can be inside, outside, upside down, in a gym, not a gym, stretch, free, it feels good. All the things that I just told you about moving your body naturally create those endorphins. You don't have to spend a dime on medication. And if you're supposed to be a medication, that's between you and your doctor. I'm not telling you to throw your pills away. I'm telling you by controlling what I do with my body and moving it every day, I've been able, me personally, have been able to throw away a bag of pills. Nice. I take supplements. Yep. Highly, highly effective because of the delivery system that they have. Most people who take vitamins and supplements are frustrated. They spend all this money on it and they don't right. really see effects. And one of the things I'll leave you guys with is the importance of understanding whenever you take any type of supplement at all, right. understand how your body can absorb it. Is there a delivery method in that supplement that can get that nutrition into your bloodstream? And if not, stop spending your money. I don't care what brand you use, but make sure you start educating yourself. It's one of the things that I coach on highly because I've been that girl who spent, listen, you don't get to 320 pounds without trying a lot of different things to get healthy and being disappointed over and over and over and over again and losing lots of money that I, sometimes I didn't have it. I had four right. little girls and I was single. I needed to figure out how to keep money flowing, you know? And um, I finally found something very effective. Um, so- which is great. And you bring up a very good point as we're rounding out in terms of having our body absorb these nutrients. So what will it even accept to, to have those nutrients do what they're here for in our bodies? Great. Yeah. Michelle. Power. What's that? Education. <clears throat> power. Education power. is power. Don't follow marketing. Do right. your homework. It is your body. You got one. Do your homework. Don't just fall for an ad on Facebook. Don't do it. Do your homework. The yep. research is available at your fingertips. Right. Where can we find you? Tell us what you're up to besides your podcast. Okay. So it feels like all things go back to audacity to be happy. So yeah, I am reachable via email through the audacity to be happy by audacity. The number two, the letter B, happy at gmail.com. I am somebody who's super attentive about the people who reach out to me. Even if it's to say, I can't attend to this um, call right now. I can reach you tomorrow, this time or this time. I'm really good about my follow-up because I know each person that comes to me is coming to me on purpose. It's not mm -hmm. an accident, right? So I also, I'm a big texter because I do a lot of texting accountability with people. So it's important. So I will share my number. I'm sure when you put your podcast out, you put a contact thing, but my number is 561-558-5428. I share my number. I share my email. It's all my personal. I don't ever want to be too big for all of that. But if my brand blew up, I'd still share my number and I'd have the most amazing people answering the calls because <laughs> who I am, 
was meant to be able to reach an amazing amount of humans. It really wasn't, my journey wasn't for me. It was to share it. Um, And I think that you're on the same page, Heather. You are sharing your journey and you're doing it so beautifully and transparently and you are gifting the world with your insight and your ability to share differently than other people share. So I'm blessed and I'm thankful for this opportunity. Thank you for your friendship. Thank you for the opportunity to talk to your community. Um, I'm here whenever you want me back. I'm going to have you on my show as well, because I know that you walk your life with the same purpose and intention to have the audacity to be happy every day, no matter what your circumstances are, you choose to find joy in the middle of the mess because life is messy. We don't control it. Oh, cheers to that and to you and to me and to the show and to everybody listening. This is it really is a joyous time to be alive. It really is. It mess and mess and all. It's a joyous time to be alive and to share it with beautiful people. Yeah. So thank you, thank you, and happy summertime. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Thank you, Austin. Thank you. We'll do. We'll do. We'll do. And thank you for listening, everybody. Please be sure to like, follow, review, and share this podcast. And if you would like to be part of the conversation, send emails to podcast at lastingconversations.com and find us on Facebook at Lasting Conversations. This is Lasting Conversations. We get to the heart of everything. <laughs>